Welcome to video number 14 in my series of presentations that will attempt to demystify tourism. I'm Dr. Stan Begahe, the creator and narrator of the videos. Their content is based on my experiences worldwide as a professor, consultant, writer, manager, and tourist in more than 80 countries on six continents. The tourism industry is complex and confusing. It is regarded by many as the world's largest industry while others say it is a phenomenon or a form of human behavior, not a real industry. So it can't be the world's largest industry, mainly because they have difficulty determining its parameters and measuring its economic activities, especially when domestic tourism is included. But then they can see that it's the world's largest services industry. Well, make up your mind. Is it an industry or not? Most people who study tourism agree that it is a mega industry made up of multiple industries such as the airline industry, the attractions industry, the hotel industry, the restaurant industry, the cruise industry, and many others. It all seems pretty nitpicky to me. Tourism activities are enormous. International tourism arrivals have topped one billion per year, and tourism receipts are major parts of the economy for virtually every country in the world, except the most backward and least secure ones. It is a leader in world GDP, employment, foreign exchange earnings, and many other economic categories. UNWTO states that tourism equals or surpasses oil exports, food products, and automobiles. World's largest industry or not, it's big, really big. As part of the services industry, tourism is labor intensive. This is especially true of its hospitality sectors, accommodations, and food and beverage. Tourism is responsible for approximately 9% of all jobs in the world. This includes direct employment in its four operational sectors and various other direct support areas. It also includes indirect employment or jobs that exist because tourism exists, such as people working for aircraft manufacturers or public relations firms. Tourism employment ranges from unskilled and semi-skilled to skilled and professional, and it includes a mix of full-time, part-time, and seasonal jobs for all ages in both men and women. Some jobs require extensive customer contact, while others involve back-of-the-house business functions or other support activities. Tourism jobs are mobile also, as career-minded staff climb the ladder within a sector, change sectors, or move to another country or continent. Tourism involves a great deal of money flowing in and out of destinations by both tourists and the tourism industry. Tourism means outsiders visit a place, purchase its tourism products, and then go home leaving the destination with more money than it had before they visited. It's a bit like 20 people in a room all day buying and selling from each other. At the end of the day, when they count all the money, it totals the same, or less if somebody left the room to buy something not available in the room. But if they were visited by three or four people who spent money on their goods and services, they would have more money at the end of the day. Tourism brings in new money that creates wealth within the community for businesses, governments, and individuals. Government officials love tax revenue. They need it to provide basic services, and politicians need it to fulfill their campaign promises and get reelected. In addition to more revenue from income tax, sales tax, and property tax, tourism creates many new forms of special taxes such as those on hotel rooms, airline tickets, and car rentals. Governments really like this form of taxation because it's paid by visitors who are also not local voters. Tourism officials must work with government policymakers to ensure their tax rates are not so high that their destination suffers a competitive disadvantage. It's also important to legislate that tourism's special taxes go into a dedicated fund that can only be used for tourism research, promotion, development, preservation, and other projects that enhance the health of the tourism industry and its ability to benefit the local community. If tourism is often rich people visiting poor people, it stands to reason that the destination infrastructure might need upgraded. When tourism spreads into pristine areas, it will need developed from scratch. And even in developed areas, the increase in tourism traffic and activities will require infrastructure enhancements. Infrastructure that is important to tourism includes roads, airports, seaports, and utilities, such as water, sewage, electricity, telecommunications, and internet, including Wi-Fi, plus services such as money exchange facilities. 
Infrastructure development is normally a government responsibility, and even though it is funded by taxpayers, residents should also benefit from its use. Nonetheless, inadequate or unreliable infrastructure means dissatisfaction among mainstream tourists and a loss of repeat and referral business. An export is a business selling something to somebody from another place, usually another country. We normally think of this as a tangible product that is manufactured here and shipped to a buyer over there. Destinations are also in the export business when they host foreign tourists. A business in one country is selling its product, in this case a tourism experience, to someone from another country. The difference is, instead of shipping the product to the consumer, in tourism, the consumer travels to the product. This is called an invisible export. Tourism's invisible exports help offset a country's imports in its balance of payments. If a country makes more money from its inbound tourism than its residents spend on outbound tourism, then it will register a tourism surplus. If not, it will have a tourism deficit. An important factor in determining whether or not a country's tourism exports top its tourism imports are the foreign exchange rates involved in all of these international transactions. Tourism has an income multiplier effect. This means that when a unit of currency, such as a dollar or a euro, is earned by a destination, it will circulate around the area as many people continue to use it to buy and sell additional products. So its actual value is always more than its face value due to its increased purchasing power that it accumulates as it passes from one hand to the next. This occurs through direct, indirect, and induced spending. For example, direct spending is a tourist paying for a sightseeing tour, the indirect spending is a tour company paying the tour guide, and the induced spending is a tour guide buying a new digital camera. Destinations that buy products they produce have higher multipliers because the money keeps circulating much longer. Large advanced countries normally have large multipliers, while smaller countries, especially islands that import many products, have much lower multipliers. Leakage is the enemy of the multiplier effect. Leakage is what causes money to eventually stop circulating and leak from the economy. If there was no leakage, money would circulate forever and have a very high multiplier. Leakage comes in many forms and some of it is unavoidable or necessary to attract and satisfy tourist needs. Common forms of leakage during development operations are cost of imported materials to construct and equip facilities, cost of imported products such as food and beverage that are desired by tourists, repatriation of salaries of foreign workers and profits by foreign owners and investors, expenses incurred promoting the destination in foreign source markets, tax exemptions granted by destinations as investment incentives, profits earned by foreign hotels and airlines, and commissions paid to travel agencies and package fares paid to tour operators in foreign source markets. In some Caribbean countries where enclave tourism is the norm, as much as 80% of tourism spending is estimated to leak from the economy. Since tourism is a mega industry consisting of parts of many other industries, it is not considered an industry by the national account system. Therefore, in order to uniformly measure its economic impact within individual countries, the Tourism Satellite Account, TSA, was created. The TSA consists of a set of 10 tables that represent various aspects of tourism's economic contribution, ranging from gross domestic product and employment to inbound tourism expenditures and capital investments. This enables a country to analyze tourism alongside other sectors of its economy, compare its tourism results with other destinations, and then decide its relative importance and the level of government support it should receive. In addition to the previously mentioned leakage, seasonality of jobs, and tourism infrastructure paid by taxpayers, tourism has several other potential negative impacts. Destinations can develop their tourism industry to the point where they are overly dependent on it. They incur so much debt and invest so many of their resources in tourism development, they must continuously feed the machine in order to pay for items such as new airports, loans for resorts, and land redevelopment. Such dependence on tourism limits its ability to become integrated into a larger economy, which results in higher leakage and leads to land speculation, higher priced commodities, and more outside ownership. It also makes the major share of the economy vulnerable to problems in its primary source markets, which are often not properly diversified. 
When the economy of a tourism-dependent destination is going well, the saying is, a high tide lifts all boats. But the opposite is also true. Tourism is an enormous economic activity. It is coveted by destinations of countries around the world, mainly for the jobs and income it creates. Everything else it contributes flows from there. In Los Angeles, in the USA, tourism officials report that every 250 tourists creates one new job. That's more income, more wealth, more spending, and more tax revenue for the LA community. Tourism has the potential to provide ongoing benefits to communities of all sizes, as it's often developed by local entrepreneurs who operate small businesses, including ones that are family run. Now I invite you to watch video number 15, Sociocultural Impacts of Tourism. Thank you.